you have to know that you are, should I say, a good and beautifully sunny afternoon, which for Amsterdam standards mean that you actually are excused for wishing that I finish quickly this speech so we can take advantage of some sun outside before it's dark. But for those who survived Denmark, it's very okay. Don't worry, I'll be sure. First of all, this is definitely not about me alone, but I firstly have to thank this class for the honor of speaking on their behalf. My connection with this master's goes back to at least 2010, when I first learned about it online. I printed out most of the website, uh, saw our environment, and uh, journalists still they like paper a lot. And I remember bringing the A4 sheets to bed even. I dreamed about taking the course that would enable me to return more prepared to the journalistic field after some deceptions in Brazilian politics. In 2011, I decided to apply to the Masters and was accepted, but did not have the financial conditions to enroll and live in Denmark. The following year, I was accepted again, and because I was already working in my own consulting business in the Netherlands and starting to make some money, I could afford moving to Aarhus. But by mid-2013, my life, after the completion of this first year in Aarhus, my life changed dramatically. I returned to Brazil and to politics, interrupting the studies right before starting the Amsterdam year. Elected to the State Parliament of Rio Grande do Sul by the popular vote in 2014, it would be difficult to ever return to the Netherlands to finish what I once started and dreamed so much of completing. But difficult is not impossible. Here I am, and here you are. Everyone with their own story, with their own personal challenges, with their own limitations and outstanding capabilities. Celebrating this moment. Congratulations. You deserve it. This is a very, very special group. International, transcultural, diverse. But one group with people that share many feelings, expectations and good moments at the same time. Local wisdoms became universal to us. Domestic slangs turn into part of our own lingua franca. Isn't that fresh? Uh, I mean, really fresh man. And who would have thought that all of this would have started in Aarhus, of all places? In a nutshell, according to Lara Busing, who actually I thank for helping me revising this speech, and I quote Lara about the city of Aarhus, small town, so much nature, stupid hill. Thank you, Bettina. Thank you, Henrik. You represented fantastically well how much the Danish staff and faculty cared about us during the time in our lives that we've spent amongst the Vikings. Thank you again. As for Amsterdam, our special thanks go to Andreas and Penny, representing the faculty, faculty and Eric and staff. Although many of us, professional journalists, amongst whom some are even used to field work in perilous sites, Although many of us got scared in the beginning with the tons of articles, one way and over, speed tests and regressions, not to mention the causal models that some are still thinking about, there were no defections. We endured and we always were motivated by faculty and staff not only to pass, but to give our best. Thank you. To all those who supported from the outside, our warmest and sincerest gratitude. I have to personally thank Acton Institute and Link Institute who provided me with, with scholarships for this academic year. And in their names, I would like to thank every institution who supported anyone in this class. Your investment will pay back, if not already yet. Otherwise, just please be patient. A special thank you, by the way, to the unknown Dutch, Dane, and European taxpayer who supported us. It's always good to remember that public money does not exist if there is no taxpayer. Finally, thank you, family and friends those from close and those from afar, because without your support, this would be simply impossible. Thanks to God, whatever creed you have or don't. Journalism, as we know it, is changing so fast that even we, professionals with a master's degree in the field obtained from two of the most respectable universities in the world, have difficulties to keep track of everything. However, as Tom Buck puts it, Journalism needs democracy for its freedom and independence. And in turn, democracy needs journalism for the flow of information, for public discussions about political issues, and as a watchdog against the abuse of power. Therefore, a caveat. Even though we have to keep track and be aware of every little change in the field and adapt ourselves 
as much as possible. We cannot and must not lose sight of the fact that, and I quote James Carey, without journalism, there is no democracy. And without democracy, there is no journalism. As graduating master's students and professional journalists, we must defend true journalism based on facts and on seeking the truth, and true democracy defending the rule of law in strong, accountable, and reliable institutions. Unfortunately, both Freedom House and Reporters Without Borders conclude year after year after year that freedom of the press is decreasing around the world. According to Freedom House in 2016, only 13% of the world's citizenry lived in countries where the press is free, while 42% in countries where partly free press is existent, and a very sad 45% share of the world's population in countries where the press is not free. What is more telling, many in our group live in or come from countries where the press is partly free, as is actually my case as well, or live or come from countries where the press is not free at all. In fact, 12, I repeat, 12 out of 27 newly master's graduates in journalism, who also are professional journalists in 15 different countries in the world, or 44% amongst us, 12 are nationals of countries where the press is either partially free or not free at all. This means that we have people in this room who are putting their own lives at risk because of the mere fact that they have chosen to follow their hearts and exercise their professional vocation in spite of all legal, political or economic pressures they might feel or experience. We cannot accept this. We cannot accept this. And I believe, speaking especially on behalf of those who came all this way to study in the Netherlands or in Denmark, where the press is free and democracy is taken often for granted, that every effort to change this situation is necessary and absolutely invaluable as journalism and democracy are always at risk, everywhere. We should do more, we can do more. And I hope that more will be done, also in the academy, to study this phenomenon, to give motivation for those who study here, to return to their countries more motivated to change things. As I used to say, since I returned to my homeland Brazil back in 2013, also in a way to convince myself that I was making the right decision to leave such a beautiful and free country as the Netherlands, I used to say, I don't want to live in another country. I want to live in another Brazil. Likewise, I wish every citizen and journalist here in this room, wherever they are, whatever they do, and in their homeland or abroad, I wish everybody here, and let me refer to you, do not take anything you have achieved in your life for granted. For the price of liberty is eternal vigilance. Teresa, Natasha, Ana, Lara, Belen, Alicia, Cheris, Samia, Salt, Tiaí, Sandra, Tiaje, Vinicius, Alessandro, Veronica, Ken, Sun, Jesse, Anya, Emma, Florence, Lena, Paula, Maris, Isabel, Micaela. The prize of liberty is eternal vigilance. Congratulations and please keep it fresh. Really, really fresh. Thank you very much.